Chanel, welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today we are blasting Mexico's Disgorge Forensic Parasitic Records reissue. One of the most insane, hyper-blasting, fucking bulldozers of gore ever recorded. Seriously, like, I have a lot of friends, though, that are turned off by the album cover. Not this. This is kind of tame compared to what the album cover is. But it's kind of a bummer because this is seriously one of the gnarliest, like, recordings ever <laughs> like i'm not even fucking joking discord forensic is just on this level of extremity like it, it, it's it's just fucking gnarly like there's no other real word for it besides i mean you can call it gross but at the end of the day it's fucking sick like and it's great if you're a fan of gore that's just at this insane level of blasting, not using vocal effects, it's just fucking great. To me, this is like a perfect example of like gore done right, and it's awesome. It sounds legitimately like a fucking bulldozer of death. And there's like these outside kind of black metal elements at times. It's weird if you look at the band Disgorge. Give me one second. I actually have a poster. Now this is the newer Disgorge. They're, they're, they're not wearing like their arm gauntlets and stuff. Maybe that's just an on stage thing. But they're normally like decked out like they're in a, you know, black metal band. And it's fucking sick. Like just you gotta make sure it's the Mexican Disgorge, not the Tech Death Unique Leader Disgorge. Which, you know, they're alright, but when it comes to Disgorge, the Mexican Disgorge is the best Disgorge. But, there's a reason I played this today, and that's because I want to talk about this classic and... A lot of you, again, the cover and all the art here, it's going to turn you off. I'm just giving you a heads up. I'm just a sucker for super gnarly, like, gore grind. And you might be like, wait, what? Like, but, yeah, I, I love that shit. But when it's done correctly, like, a perfect example is regurgitate. I feel like they just did gore grind so well. And it was kind of my introduction outside of Carcass. Like, early Carcass. I remember hearing, you know... I'm not going to really count Deviant. Deviant is my favorite regurgitate release. But, like... It's just so fucking pissed off sounding and sick. But, like, uh... Carnivorous Erection. I used to have that t-shirt and like, oh man, you had to see the looks I would get wearing that thing. If you've never seen the cover for Carnivorous Erection, look it up and you'll be like, why the fuck would you wear that t-shirt outside of going to a show? Because I would just wear it to go to like fucking Wendy's and people would be staring at me like, I don't want to eat anymore, but hailing from the Netherlands, this is a late 90s, like, first time on vinyl that's not a picture disc. Alright, here it is. This is Last Days of Humanity, Hymns of Indigestible Suppuration. And suppurations when, like, there's, like, this gnarly pus buildup, and it, it's fucking sick. Like, just look it up. It's spelled S-U-P-P-U-R-A-T-I-O-N. And with most, you know, gore bands, they go by, like, the more medical-themed title and whatnot. But they use 
real gore photographs instead of, you know, the fictionalized, like, regurgitation tales of necrophilia. As much as I love that record and as filthy as the cover art is, it doesn't have shit on that. Like, what the fuck? They definitely got that off Rotten.com back in the 90s. They had to have. And then on the back here, here's some more filth. And trust me, this sounds like this looks. It is re goddamn fucking ridiculous how gnarly this recording is. These four gentlemen created something that rarely, rarely comes around. And that is legitimate, good gore grind. This isn't some triple X maniac shit. Like, this isn't some, you know, just one man band in Turkey or some shit. Like, this is a legit project that got a 20th anniversary reissue by fucking Hell's Headbangers, who did such an amazing job here. I got one of the 333 red and blue split LPs. And again, there is some filthy shit on the actual vinyl sticker. So I'm just going to give you a quick glimpse at it, but real quick, look at this fucking rad color. Like, it goes so well with, like, the cover and whatnot. I meant to say color, not cover. But this color goes with the cover so perfectly. This is a super gnarly picture, so I'm going to hold it back here. I'm sorry, like, I have to hold this back here. If you know what this is... I can't show it, obviously. YouTube hates me as it is. But, like, this is gore grind at its finest. Now, don't get me wrong, Mexico's Disgorge is, like, right there, but I don't really consider Disgorge a gore grind band. To me, it's just straight up gore. It's just, it's a, it is exactly what they say it is. It's bulldozing gore metal. Like, there's awesome samples like this. It's fucking sick. Like, on here, you get some gnarly, gnarly samples. Obviously, I mean, looking at the artwork and everything. But the thing that really matters is the tunes. It's fucking crushing, disgusting. Disgusting, and I love it. I love every fucking track on here. It's disgusting, yeah, but like, it's tongue in cheek. Nobody really like buys a record like this and is like, well, they might, but like, you know, like, nobody's gonna get off on something like this unless you're really fucked up and. You probably should stop watching Necro Romantic for real if this shit turns you on. Because I know there's people out there that, like, when I was living in Austin, Texas, and I'm not naming names, but, like, <laughs> my one roommate's friend, he couldn't have sex with his girlfriend anymore. And the reason behind this was he was having some performance issues. Because he became addicted. I'm dead serious about this story. Like, I'm not just making this shit up. He got addicted to that type of anime porn. I don't know what it's called. Because I have no interest in cartoon pornography whatsoever. Hell, I don't even really watch pornography anymore. I'm kind of like indifferent to it. But has nothing to do with this but like he had to put anime porn in the background when he would get with his girlfriend like I can't even imagine 
being in that situation. If I was the, the woman, I'd be like, see ya, like, I am out of here. You'd rather get off on a cartoon than a person? Like, I, to each his and her own, you know? But, like, back to last days of humanity, because they fucking rule. And you might be like, no, but yes. 20th anniversary reissue of one of the sickest gore grind albums ever made. And that's a fucking fact. Now this was originally pressed on vinyl as a picture disc. For all you real sickos out there, go hunt that down. But the Hell's Headbangers reissues, they also have 333 copies on red, white, and blue splattered vinyl. I had the option to get both from a donator, and I was like, dude, I don't need two copies of this record. Like, if you want to donate, I am more than grateful, but you do not need to get me both color variants. Like, there's no reason for me to have two copies. Like, I'm going to actually listen to this record. I don't want you wasting your money like that. You know what I mean? And I actually did not ask that person permission if I could give them a thank you. So, if you want me to give permission and you're watching this, DM me on Instagram and I'll throw you, you know, a thank you. There's just some people that are kind of... They're not, you know, they just want to stay private about it and whatnot, and I completely understand. But, for the first time, pressed on regular vinyl, like I said, they did the picture disc. Faithfully reproducing every last element, long live last days of humanity. And seriously, this is the best gore grind record, like I said, I've ever heard. It's fucking ridiculous because, you know, they wear that gore grind tag very, very proudly. Where some bands, you know, like they push it off to the side and you get those kids that are like, Oh, I didn't know you like slam. And I don't say anything, but, like, that's one of those little fucking things that gets under my skin. It's not slam. It's gore. And this is gore grind. And it's gore grind done so fucking well. Every track on here is just disgusting, crushing, and amazing. Also, this is in Conspiracy and licensed from Bone Brigade's records, which is fucking sick, because we went over another Bone Brigade's release, like, a week ago. For, I'm drawing a fucking blank right now, but I remember being all stoked. I was like, whoa, like, the record label's called Bone... Like, I thought that was, like, really cool. I don't know why I can't remember what the fuck album it was. But anyways, you have, like, Maggot Feast on a swollen 48th cut rectal bowel inquisition intoxicated. The taste of festering, consuming, I can't even pronounce this word, but purulent spittum from flesh to liquid mess, reeking mush beneath each orgasmic abortion catering from the womb acute palatable hemorrhage fuck yeah my favorite song on here is like legitimately stirred intestines though which is on the B side but perforniated festered scrotum Starts off the B-side, then Stirred Intestines, Wet Remains, awesome song. 
<laughs> Purulent odor in stoma. Defecating anal sludge. It feels like you're like reading a 12 year old's like joke book, but trust me, this is no joke. It, this is fucking last days of humanity. This shit fucking rules. Then you have rancid rumor extraction, wide open wounds on a disfigured, the title track, hymns of indigestible suppuration. Suppuration, however the fuck you pronounce it. Ulcerated offal. Defleshed by flies. Bow exhi exhibition. And uh, raped in the back of a van. Yikes. But this was the late 90s. This was a completely different time period when you could get away with that type of stuff and not get canceled or whatever that stuff is. Like, people still give Cannibal Corp shit for some of their lyrical content. And to be honest, like, it's not tame, but it's tame in comparison with some other bands out there. But they're just not as... as I'm not gonna say Cannibal Corpse is a mainstream band, but like, when it comes to death metal, yeah, I mean, they were in a major motion fucking picture, which is awesome. I still love the TV version when Ace Ventura makes it up on stage and he's doing the vocals and whatnot and he ends it. <laughs> I gotta go, I got a date tonight with your mothers. Just, I highly recommend if you've never seen that scene in Ace Ventura Pet Detective because some of you might be young and might not know about Jim Carrey the actor. That dude used to love death metal and grindcore. Like, check out him on David Letterman imitating Napalm Death. It's fucking great. Like, it's seriously hilarious. Especially if you know the context of it. If you know where he's coming from, the joke is like, dude, that's fucking hilarious. And it's so on the fucking money. But, Last Days of Humanity, Hymns of Indigestible Suppuration. It's a fucking classic for a reason. You know, something this filthy doesn't get you know, reissue 20 years later unless it's fucking important and is good. That's the most important part about a reissue. The demand has to fucking be there or what's the point? You don't want to be stuck with 666 copies of this lying around the warehouse. Like, this is hidden on Hell's Headbangers band camp. You have to go through the actual distro to get to Last Days of Humanity's band camp. So it's kind of cool that they hid this because, and the art's even censored as well. There's like, it even has like a big black censored sticker on the band camp art, but it's still, be, I guess because it's a real life death, but they didn't do it with Pissgrave. They didn't do it with fucking disgorge so like I don't really know but this is super gnarly and I understand why they would censor it like this dude's skull is completely empty and it's just gnarly and you know check it out on your own because like I said I don't want this video getting taken down for you know gore but this is the gnarliest of them all, I think. Like, this, like, carbonized human that looks like it washed up on a beach also is, like, fucking just gross. And you gotta thank these four gentlemen for it. And also, the vocals on here are just inhuman and absolutely what you would expect from a gore grind release, but just a little more sick.
it's fucking awesome. Like, the vocal delivery on here puts a smile on my face. And that's all that really matters besides how sick those vocals are with all the riffs behind them. The drumming is like insane. Everything about this record is absolutely devastatingly crushing, disgusting, and if you're a fan of extreme music, it's kind of an essential listen, in my opinion. Even if you're not a fan of gore grind, it's just gnarly, and it deserves your attention. Last Days of Humanity, 20 year anniversary reissue on Hell's Headbangers of Hymns of Indigestible Suppuration. Fuck yeah. So gross. Please, you know, I'm not trying to be a sicko and whatnot, but like, I love that type of stuff. You got, I have the poster up there. The poster of the cover is gnarly. Like, I, I had, I might have to take it down or just put it someplace else where my nephew can't see it. I don't want him to see, because I did leave, I, okay, here's one thing that's a bummer about having, I, I don't have my own children, but I'm a uncle again, and it's awesome, like, baby Hudson's cool as shit. And I can't wait for him to get older and to show him cool-ass shit like Predator. Yeah. And, like, Cole thinks that, you know, Hudson's named after Hudson from Aliens. Which I think is awesome. Because the one day we, I was babysitting, I was like, hey, you want to watch a cool action movie? Because I do think he's too young to see Alien with, like, you know, the kind of... Gnarly. I think it would legitimately scare him. Where Aliens, it you know, it's more of an action movie than a sci-fi horror film. But those elements are there, but they're not as gnarly as Alien and H.R. Giger's fucking monster. Like, it's it's so fucking sick. Like, yeah. no CGI will ever, ever, ever replicate. Giger's work. I'm sorry, that's my fucking opinion, and I'm sticking to it. Just like I'm sticking to Last Days of Humanity, and even though this, it's offensive, it's sickening, and yes, the last track is called Raped in the Back of a Van, I don't approve of that title, but it's all tongue-in-cheek, it's all part of the gore grind game. What is the gore grind game? Look at a band like Triple X Maniac. Now, these are not my words. They put out a record called Harvesting the Cunt Nectar and had some gnarly samples on it. A couple friends of mine back in the day, that was their secret band and whatnot, and they played fucking Maryland Death Fest. I think they headlined Maryland Death Fest. Back, like, in 2003 or 2004. I forget, but they had, like, dildos and all sorts of crazy fucking shit. But I highly, highly recommend checking this out. I'm going to put the Hell's Headbangers link in the video description. From there, you can go to the Bandcamp if you are interested in listening to a higher quality version than YouTube. But absolutely sickening gore grind from the Netherlands. Last Days of Humanity. So fucking good. Hymns of Indigestible Suppuration. And we were blasting Mexico's Disgorge Forensic on Parasitic Records. And as always, thanks for watching, you fucking rule. Hails.